Okay, hello and good morning everyone. Welcome to JVD Traders Espresso with me, that is on Charles, because today is the 23rd of April 2020, so yep, welcome everyone. Welcome to this Thursday's morning recorded session where we're going to have a quick look at the markets, a few of the charts, um, the usual stuff. Uh, but before we do that, as always, let's quickly have a read through our risk disclaimer. So. The content we produce does not constitute investment advice or investment recommendation, should not be considered as such, and does not in any way constitute an invitation to acquire any financial instrument or product. As always, a few seconds for you to read the rest, and we can continue. Okay, so um, also just before we jump in, as always, let's quick mentioning of our JVD uh, YouTube channel to which you can always subscribe to in order not to miss any of our upcoming videos. And of course our JVD Bank website and specifically our JVD research page, which we update on a daily basis. So yep, feel free to visit us here on jvdbank.com and click on the research tab right there on the top. So, and I believe you can find some useful information here for yourselves. So, um, now then, a quick update on what's happening here globally. So the amount of total infections continue to rise. Um, total deaths, unfortunately, also continue to rise. So, yep, um, let's see. Basically, let's continue monitoring that. Let's see how this is going to uh, perform. But however, uh, the numbers are easing off a little bit. So if we compare them to the previous ones. So, yeah, uh, uh, so new cases kind of, in, especially in Europe, are easing off. So... We'll keep an eye closely on that. Um, now then, jumping into the markets. Um, so yesterday I talked about the German DAX. Um, basically what I was saying that uh, keep your eyes on the um, on the upside support line. We, we uh, Yesterday I was talking about the fact that we managed to break this one to the downside. However, we saw a bit of a rebound and uh, the, 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 the index still remained around this territory. So it didn't actually travel back up here uh, a lot and uh, it did close in the positive territory, but still not much. Um, it, from the technical side, it still remained below this upside support line, but it remained above this uh, area of support near the 10,280 10, zone. So roughly around there. That's just a quick reminder. That's the uh, lowest point of uh, 2018. So. Um, for now, we're still playing the waiting game because what we need here is we need to see basically a push through one of these uh, through one of these areas here, for one of these highlighted areas, um, in order to get comfortable with further uh, a further directional move. Um, so in a way, if we get a drop below that psychological 10,000 territory, then yes, we will aim for some. Uh, lower levels. However, uh, if we get a nice push above, back above the subside line, and push and pushes above the um, this barrier here, the high of last week, which is around the 10,820 zone, then yep, uh, a forthcoming higher high would be confirmed, and higher levels could be met. Uh, but of course, we're not going to not going to drag this one too much to the upside. We're just going to stick to some of these levels here, the 11,000 mark somewhere around there, and the um, 11,000. Uh, 450 area roughly around there so um, in a way also we're keeping an eye for, for now we're keeping an eye on this upside support line but to be honest if this index starts moving more to the side more sideways here <clears throat> excuse me, <clears throat> we will remove this upside support line. So keep your eyes on this one and keep your eyes on these two highlighted areas that I've just mentioned. Um, the FTSE 100. Now, here the situation is also a little bit difficult and uh, what I was saying that um, in a way previously when I was covering FTSE, I was saying that still in order for us to get comfortable with higher levels, we need to see a push uh, above this 5,895 territory and then we could aim for higher levels. So, um, the um, yeah, as you can see, the the price started pushing higher. Um, it's um, yesterday we had a nice close in the positive territory. However, still we remained below some of these key areas, the like the five thousand eight hundred and fifteen territory and the five thousand eight hundred and ninety five. So uh, we need to see a break of this one, the highlighted one, in order in order to get comfortable with higher levels. In terms of the downside, uh, I've mentioned previously, I talked about previously about this level here. Um, so. 
yep, in a way we could continue monitoring this one, this area around the 5,500 zone because that is, and let me just quickly uh, show you what I'm talking about. It's this little area right here. So um, this is the this is the lowest point of 2016. So the 5,500 zone could be a nice area to watch because a break of it may uh, kind of lead the index lower. So keep your eyes on this one. But for now, <clears throat> we are kind of a little bit neutral, I would say, because again, we need uh, we don't want to rush into this. We are at a very tricky spot. On one hand, yes, the index could go for a bit of a, a larger recovery because at the moment that's what how we are seeing this one it's a it's just part of a larger recovery before another leg of selling um and uh if if it pushes above this 5895 territory then yes we will aim for that larger recovery um now then um Now then, um, jumping into gold um, very quickly. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, so, with gold, it's uh, also very interesting. So yesterday I talked about gold, and uh, I was telling you guys to keep a close eye on the 1703, so the 1704 zone, roughly around there. And as you can see, we managed to close the daily candle above this. So this morning we already tested this area again from above, and uh, it acted as a good area of support. So in a way, all this is kind of leading more towards the upside. So in a way, we're now going to stay somewhat bullish. Um, we're going to aim for the for the current highest point of April, which is around the 1747, uh, 48 mark, around there, um, and then we'll take it from there. If it if it, if it gets a break above this, then yep, uh, higher levels could be met. Uh, for now, like I said, we are more uh, somewhat more bullish than bearish. And uh, let me just put an arrow here for a future reference. Um, what you could do here from the short term perspective, you could keep an eye on the 1723 zone, uh, just to remind you what that level was in the past. And let me just scroll back here into history, into 2012. And basically, up. Oh, let me zoom in here a little bit. Basically, this 1723 zone was the high of the 12th of December. Um, so 12th of December, 2012. So and the uh, 1747 was, is the current highest point of April. But slightly above that, we do have the 1754 mark, which is the highest point of November uh, 2012. So something to consider as well, <clears throat> something to keep an eye on. So, yep, let's see how this is going to play out um, for now. For now, like I said, we are more bullish than bearish on this one. But uh, of course, don't get me wrong, anything could happen. But if you s we start seeing suddenly, <clears throat> excuse me, guys, my voice is going down a little bit. So if we start seeing a drop back below the 1703-04 territory, we'll take a bit of a neutral stance. But if we start seeing a drop below the 17, uh, 1680 territory, then yep, uh, this could lead to some uh, deeper extensions to the downside. Um, and uh, yep we could aim for these slightly lower levels. However, for now, this is leaning more towards the upside. Now, Brent oil. So uh, looking at this daily chart, you can see that we yesterday we had a nice reversal here to the upside. Um, this morning, we're, we're already having a nice push higher as well. And uh, the most important is that we're pushing back above the 21.64 uh, uh, territory, which is the low of the lowest point of March. So now, the way we can play this one out is, of course, um, given that we've managed to climb back above it, it, the big question here is, can we stay above this? So all eyes are on today's daily candle. If we stay above this territory, then, yep, there could be a possibility for this one to drift higher. Um, of course, don't get me wrong, tomorrow's Friday. Sometimes on Friday, we do have uh, crazy moves, um, so be very careful. But for now, as we if we take it as it is, um, every, kind of it looks a little bit more promising, I would say, um, given that the fact that also that it's kind of, it, it moved uh, its day this morning, it moved back above the 21.64 zone. Um, yesterday only had a brief overshoot here, but today, this morning, it's climbing back up. So all eyes are on this today. Um, if it stays above this, then above this barrier, then above this lowest point of, of March, then there is a chance for this one to drift higher. If it stays below it, well, not all is, is well in the oil market still. So keep your eyes on this one. 
Now, quick mentioning of, of Litecoin. I've I've looked at this one recently, and uh, or should I say last week, I would looked at this one. And uh, what I was saying here, guys, that basically we're neutral because uh, it's a little bit of a mess here. So previously I had these lines, so of course I'll get rid of those. Um, now I'll probably draw something like this here, where as you can see, uh, I mean, this is again, don't get me wrong, this is a very tentative line. But uh, what else you could do here if we jump into a four hour chart? Now, let me just quickly capture this line. We can redraw this. Still the same uh, levels uh, for us to get after which, after a break of which we could get a little bit more comfortable with a further directional move. Still the same levels remain, uh, well, the label, levels remain the same. So uh, on for the downside, we need to see a drop below the uh, 37.94 zone. So in a way you could round it up towards the 90, uh, 37, uh, 30, 38 zone. Uh, and for the upside, we need to see a push above the uh, 47. 7.69 territory roughly around there that's the uh, current highest point of April because again up until here all this could still be somewhat uh, neutral so because what I wanted to show you here guys is basically if we ignore dragging this line from here um, not this one but this one right here so but if we take uh, take this little low uh, the low of the uh, 16th of April and uh, drag an upside line this way and if we recycle this this downside line and draw it from here let me just zoom in so we might be getting ourselves a nice symmetrical triangle so this uh, this uh, this ups downside line is taken here from uh, from the high of the 7th of April or should I say the highest point the current highest point of April and uh, something to keep in mind guys something to consider that's from the very short term perspective so if we get a break through one of these sides in a way it, this could lead to a further decline however given as you can see uh, we do have some room here up until these two highlighted areas so in a way uh, be very careful yes we could see if we get a break through the upper side of this triangle then um, then yep it could drop drag the, uh, the crypto higher, we could see this one traveling all the way here up. But as I've mentioned previously, for us to get comfortable with uh, further upside, we need to see a breakthrough one of these highlighted areas. So, yep, guys, for now, the crypto seems to be coiling up. Let's wait and see where it's going to pop. Um, let me just jump back into daily chart and let me just jump into USDJPY. So um, here you can see the overall picture is a little bit messy. So um, we had a few like a, a bit of a V-shaped sw V-shaped swing, um, and uh, now you can see that um, now the the, the the pair is kind of stuck, I would say. So jumping into a four hour chart, you can see here clearly that it's just moving sideways for now. So it's just roughly kind of drifting between the um, the 108.08 level here and the um, somewhere around here in 100, 107.22 zone. So basically, long story short, uh, we need to see a clear drop through, a uh, clear break through one of these levels before considering a, a further short term directional move however here with the downside even if we see a drop below this 107.22 to be honest because we're very close to this 106.92 territory um, it's only about 30 um, 30 pips away here probably in order for us to get a little bit more comfortable with the downside we would wait for a drop below this 106.92 zone so uh, we'll keep an eye on this one because uh, this would confirm a forthcoming lower low and uh, maybe more uh, sellers could see this is a good opportunity to step in. However, with the upside, if we get a push above the 108.08, then yes, uh, this could. We'll also keep an eye on the 200 EMA here on the four-hour chart, um, and then it could lead the pair towards this 109.38 zone, the one uh, which I've talked about previously, the one for us which is more uh, comfortable, let's say, if we get a break above this level, then yep, we would get a little bit more comfortable with higher levels. But from the very short term perspective, you could just examine exactly, you can just have a look at exactly at this. And uh, we'll, we'll, like I said, you could in a way try to capture maybe a, a move higher here, if we get a break above this 108.08 uh, zone. And of course, at the same time, we could Get, we could get a break above the 200 EMA here on the four hour chart. Uh, GBP Aussie, quick update on this one. For this, I need a daily chart. So, yesterday we closed back above this upside support line. I talked about this pair yesterday, and in a way, kind of, it, you can see that the bulls are not giving up. Um, it, 
they tried to push the uh, the pair higher today, but still kind of the bears quickly pushed the rate back down again. So long story short, basically, guys, what we're looking here for is still this are still the same levels. So for the upside, in order to get comfortable with higher levels, we need to see a push above the 1.9868 zone. Um, and in terms of the downside, we need to see a drop below the 1.9291 in order to get, get get a little bit more comfortable with lower levels. For now, we're just observing this one. GBP USD. So quick update on this. So it, yes, this is uh, moving exactly what I've talked about yesterday. So it's correcting a little bit higher. Uh, but um, looking at this daily chart, you can see that still it's below the 21 EMA here on the on the daily chart um, and in a way kind of all this could be seen could be seen as a bit of a correction before another leg of selling however for now we're just going to target this level the 1.2195 which is the lowest point of October 2019 and also as you can see back in the beginning of April it also acted as a good area of support so uh, that's why we'll initially target this level um, some probably could say that maybe it's going to travel a little bit higher here test maybe this area and then reverse back to the downside yes of course could be then we could be getting ourselves a nice uh possible uh, head and shoulders pattern here uh, but to be honest again uh, for now let's not get ahead of ourselves uh, let's see if, if something like this will be formed for now we're keeping close eye on the 21 EMA on the daily chart because currently it's acting as a good area of resistance if it gets broken if it gets broken then the next potential resistance to monitor is around the 1.2485 but if that gets broken now this is where more bulls could start joining in euro UNZ, euro NZD um, quick uh, update on this one I talked about this pair yesterday and basically here the situation is still the same uh, we're stuck in a range um, this is what I talked about uh, basically what I was saying that uh, if we get a push higher but fail to move above the 1.82 96 97 zone then yep uh, this could in a way uh, push the rate back down and basically we could be getting ourselves a very nice beautiful range um, so that's why for now we're saying staying put something to uh, obviously of course keep uh, something to keep on your radar because this could be quite interesting once in once it gets a breakout here um, euro usd finally on this one here uh, the same idea still remains as yesterday we do have ourselves a, a possible descending triangle here uh, the pair is kind of fluctuating here right now just slightly above this 1.077 uh, which is the lowest point of February and also acted as a good area of support back in the beginning of, of, of April so um, that now like I said we're keeping a close eye on this territory if we get a nice four hour candle close below this then yep further declines could be possible if we get a break above this upper side of the triangle a uh, descending triangle or let's say let's if we just assume that this is just a downside line so if we get a break above this downside line and a push above the 200 EMA on the four hour chart then yes we will uh, then yes we will aim for some higher levels as you can see I don't have a level here because again it's a very tricky spot here uh, any level could be a possible level so that's why I'm gonna stick to the uh, 200 EMA here on the four hour chart and uh, a nice good push above it could in a way increase the chances of a potential move higher so keep your eyes on this one so guys I really hope you found it useful and thank you very much for watching and listening and thank you for, for all your views and likes and everything and for your support Support, guys really appreciate it so uh, yep guys stay safe um, both uh, market wise and health wise and catch my video later on my traders uh, tea time around 13 15 GMT time so yep uh, we'll have a look at some of these instruments some new ones and then we'll take it from there so have a beautiful day guys thank you very much and bye bye